Hi guys, Gary JRC here, back with another video. Today's video is about my 110th scale drifters and my latest project. So uh, we got to, last time I got this ready to run uh, RMX, which uh, I thought was pretty cool and uh, worked really well. And you saw it drifting around my 124th scale mini drift track in my garage. And it seemed to handle really, really well. I'm impressed with that. Got modifications coming for that soon. Haven't quite got around to it yet, but that'll be, uh, I've ordered the parts and once they come, I will make a video with the modifications a lot you guys suggested. Uh, one of the other projects I've got in the works is uh, this Sakura D4, which I've had for a while, but haven't done anything with. So this is one that came uh, as a rolling chassis, ready built. It's uh, all alloy, as you can see, beautiful purple in color. So this is a belt drive. So I've got installed some electronics into this car and uh, I'm going to be using this Toro TS120 Competition uh, Sky RC uh, electric speed controller, brushless sensored. I've also got a Onisee key, I think it's a 10.5T motor that I'm going to install. Now I've got these uh, same electronics in my Y2D over here which is what today's video is about. I think this is the servo I'm going to install. Uh, I kind of picked this up because I could get it quickly just because I want to get the car up and running, but I think I'd rather have the uh, same servo I've got in this car, which I'll show you shortly. So that's a up and coming project yet to be done. So let me just move these out of the way. So guys, this is my uh, Y2DS. I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit just so you've got a better view of this. Now these magnetic mounts are makeshift ones that I made myself. I've actually got uh, better ones that I'm going to use on the Sakura, which are from B&D Racing. So this car, as you can see, I've got the Onisiki motor, the same one that I just showed you in the box, the same speed controller. I've got an Onisiki uh, servo and an Onisiki gyro. I'll put the specs up for that in the description so you know uh, what exactly they are. And I've got a shorty LiPo here. So. The wheels, I think, are uh, MST uh, silver dot tires. Uh, okay, so this car I built myself. It was a very easy build. The instructions were very clear and pretty much out of the box, it was easy to drift. Um, having built, we you know, one twenty-fourth scale and you know, even smaller uh, drift cars, these one-tenth scales are very easy to set up and I found it I could almost drift it without the gyro. You know, you could put the gyro down to zero and this thing will still still manage a controllable drift. And just because of the size of it, you can see when the tail is swinging out and you can counter steer yourself. That doesn't mean I don't run it without a gyro, but it definitely doesn't need it like the little cars do. So off the bat, uh, I have started to modify this car. As you can see, I've got these BND Racing Alloy Arms upper arms I put on which give a better caster adjustment you can slide the caster backwards and forwards and um, straight away I will say they are a little bit longer than the standard arms that you get but it just meant that I had to rejig the whole steering system which was a bit of a pain but that's why I've got them so I can tune this in I've got more parts to come to install for this I've got the lower arms that I haven't installed yet I've also got front bumper and I've also got uh, suspension mounts and an alloy motor mount. So these are all things that I'm going to change over, which will be part of what the fun for the next few videos about this car. So in terms of the handling, how does it compare to the uh, RMX?
So that went a little bit differently to what I expected. <clears throat> Goes to show this ready to run RMX is very good. The handling, the way it's been set up at the factory has been done to perfection. And you can see the way they set it up, you know, the default settings are perfect. All the ball ends are tight in, in to the actual arms. So this is predetermined this is gonna work. Same for the lower arms, they've got the right correct amount of washers on. There's no visible screw threads here. So it seems to me they've actually worked this out exactly. The same way the link arms are actually fixed here. It comes ready to run and factory set by the pros to drift perfectly and it does very well. This car, even though it's got the better electronics on it, I can see it's got very good handling. I just haven't set it up as well as this car. Now I think there's a few key points that make this car drift that little bit better. I will say this had more power and was able to initiate a slide around a tight corner, which is my small track here, uh, because it can put more power down the back end and release more quickly, whereas I had to force this into a slide a bit more aggressively. And that's probably because it's got a less powerful motor. But this has an active toe, not active toe, it has a toe at the rear. So I think it must be about two and a half, five degrees, I'll have to check. Whereas the car I'm running, the Y2D, hasn't got um, uh, toe in at the back. So this has got toe in, this one hasn't. And I think that does affect the, the sliding around, um, around the uh, corners, as you saw in the footage. And I think that's something I've seen on my uh, 124th scale as well. When I set up with a... Uh, two and a half degree rear toe, I get a nicer handling car in the slide. So the other difference I think between these two cars that's worth pointing out is this one has a normal diff and this one has a fixed diff. I think that also makes a difference. So these are things, modifications that I'll need to make to the Y2D, I think, to get it to drift as well. Now I'm not saying it's a, which car is better, I'm just saying as this comes ready to run, just further reinforces how well it's set up. Um, anything else that I can say sort of really is that oh yeah, the actual uh, track width is about the same front and rear on both cars if I flip them over and put them side by side like this I don't know if got, the camera might not be able to see but you can see they're pretty much the same and the same at the front as well okay um, there's a slight toe out on the setup for this and there is also a slight inwards camber at the front on the uh, RMX, whereas my Y2D here is set up fairly flat. Steering angles are about the same. But yeah, I think uh, playing around with this, also worth pointing out, this has got gold dot and this has got silver dot tires. And yet this was the one that was slightly harder to initiate the slide with because I think it hasn't got the same level of power. So overall, guys, still really impressed with the RMX. Still a great, you know, great ready-to-run car. I'm looking forward to modding this, and I have ordered some bits that I'm going to get in for this. Um, Y2D just needs a bit better tuning by me. The uh, front setup needs to be sorted out. Maybe a rear fixed diff. Maybe a bit of a two and a half, three degree toe in at the back. These are things I will do as we go along, and then apply that to the Sakura and see how that comes out. So, yeah, I think overall you can see. This is more of a, a light comparison than a true head-to-head, -head, but you can see the RMX is impressive out of the box still. Okay, guys, that's uh, all for today's video. Um, if you like what I do here, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys all next time.